Hi, I'm Dr. Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my course on problem solving techniques. In this lesson, we're going to cover cause and effect diagrams. So our objectives for this lesson, uh, we have three, so at the end of this lesson we should be able to do the following. We want to decide when to use a cause and effect diagram and understand what it is. Identify four to six main categories that could be the cause of the problem and then break each category down into possible root causes of the problem. So we have a problem, we're not sure what is causing the problem and we need to have a method that will help us identify the root cause or root causes of the problem. Um, this is our structure for our overall program. We are in section one, problem identification. So that's one of eight sections. And within problem identification, we have four techniques. And the first of these techniques is the subject of this lesson, cause and effect diagrams. Now let's start off with our, with our quote. Uh, this is Malcolm Forbes here on his motorbike, uh, Malcolm Forbes of uh, Forbes magazine fame. And he once said, it's so much easier to suggest solutions when you don't know too much about the problem. So in other words, he's saying we really, really, really need to find out what the problem is and dig down to find out why the problem is occurring in the first place before we go and try and fix it. So it's extraordinary how often people try to fix things uh, before they understand what's causing the problem in the first place. So cause and effect diagrams, they were uh, invented by Dr. Karo Ishikawa, and they are often called fishbone diagrams. And I think you can see why here with the diagram, the generic diagram uh, that Dr. Ishikawa created. So cause and effect gives the diagram its name, and the effect is the problem. So we, we state the problem in the head of the fish, if you like here, it's like a fishbone diagram, and you, and you keep that problem statement simple. And then we have, in this case here, we've got six major categories. Now you're going to see a lot of different uh, categories on these types of diagrams. We're going to have several different versions in this lesson. Uh, but here is uh, causes. We've got six main categories. Across the top of the diagram, we have equipment, process, and people. And then at the bottom of the diagram, we have materials, environment, and management. So these are very generic uh, main causes. And uh, four to six is a usual number here. Uh, anything more than six, the diagram is going to get very, very cluttered. We can see here on the bottom left of the diagram in the materials category that we have a primary cause of, of a materials problem and within that primary cause there is a, a potential secondary cause. So it's drawing out and filling out this diagram is the task of what we want to do here and it's a great way invented by Dr Ishikawa to dig down deeply into what the potential root causes of a problem are. So when would you use a cause and effect diagram? Well, it can be used to help identify the root causes of almost any problem that you can think of. Uh, it really, really is a, a fairly straightforward tool. It's easy to learn how to use it. Um, it's great in teams, um, using whiteboards or flip charts. You can work very, very well uh, to try and understand even a simple but right, a complicated problem as well. And organize and analyze the relationships between the causes of a problem. Very often you might identify more than one root cause of a problem. So they can be used in any situation where that involves trying to solve a problem. Now here's a simple problem. This is me here with my car. And let's say when I get up in the morning, my car won't start. Now I'm not a mechanic or I'm not mechanically minded in the least and I have no idea what the cause of my car not starting is. So it could be a fuel problem, I've run out of fuel, it could be a mechanical um, problem with the engine, it could be an electrical or a battery fault, or it could be me, the user, um, not, no, not knowing how or not start trying to start the car properly. So here we, I have a problem and I have no idea what is causing this problem. And of course, um, a mechanic will, and mechanics will be able to dig down deeply into the, into the car and figure out um, what the root cause of the problem might be so that they can then fix it. So how do we draw a cause and effect diagram? Well, we first, must first identify what the problem is that we are considering. And if we think of the diagram like a fishbone diagram, we put the problem statement into the head of the fish. Now the problem statement is the effect. And then we need to know what the causes of that effect are, hence the cause and effect diagram. You can see here, we've broken our diagram down into, into the six uh, pieces uh, that's uh, from the generic template that Dr. Ishikawa created. And if you have more than one problem, use separate diagrams for each problem. 
Now here's another version of a very, very basic diagram, and this could be one that you might use if you've never used a cause and effect diagram before and you're trying it out for the first time. So I've got the five M's here in this case uh, as potential starting categories for a problem, uh, machinery, manpower, materials, methods, and money. So you, you choose your own categories for um, the diagrams that would suit the particular problem that you have. So you can imagine a problem like a car not starting would require different categories than say um, a problem with a computer or an issue with um, technical support. So speaking of technical support, uh, in the video that's going to follow this lesson, my how-to video, how to draw a cause and effect diagram, I'm going to work through um, a problem uh, in the increase in customer complaints in an e-learning company. So e-learning technical support will be uh, reporting a sudden increase in customer complaints and we want to figure out why that is. So I've come up with five um, gener general or generic type of cat main categories here. For e-learning technical support, I've decided that uh, the content of the e-learning product um, could be a problem with that. Is it a technical issue or is it a platform uh, delivery issue? And at the bottom of the diagram, I've just two categories. Uh, could it be the grammar uh, or the, the, the text of the content that's within the, the, the e-learning content? Or is it something to do with the assessments and tests that go with the content? So I'm not going to work it out here, but I'll just take a look at one of the five main categories, the technical ca main cause. I have broken it down into three primary causes. So these are along the right hand side pointing to the left, installation and maintenance. And then on the left hand side pointing to the right, uh, primary cause of bandwidth. And then within each of these, um, I've identified potent of secondary causes. So these are the potential root causes of the problem. So for example, in installation, it might be an is issue with the operating system. An operating system could have been updated, but my e-learning product may not have been updated and therefore will not install correctly. Maintenance, there could be an issue with updates and uh, not getting through or a customer just not getting uh, automatic updates uh, um, on a weekly or monthly basis. That could be the issue. On the left hand side, the uh, primary cause uh, could be bandwidth and within that the secondary causes could be that there's an issue with the speed or the you know very large file sizes could be causing difficulties so there's lots and lots of other potential problems in the technical area but these are just a few that i'm highlighting here and so in our lesson that follows uh, i will walk you through the other four categories to create this diagram this is the finished diagram here just to take a quick look at it and you can see that i have uh, lots and lots of different primary and secondary causes so i'll uh, explain to you um, what all of this means. In the assignment then that comes after the how-to video, I'm going to ask you to uh, draw a cause and effect diagram for a problem, a simple problem that I've thought up here, long queues at the post office. Let's take a look at the scenario. The post office is experiencing long delays in dealing with customers between the hours of 5 p.m. and 6 p.m., so that'll be an unusual time. Queues are much longer on average during this time than at any other time of day. So I'm sure you can imagine queues forming in the post office. So we want to figure out, well, why is this happening? So the, the problem, the effect is the long queues. Uh, what is causing that? And there could be many, many different main causes and primary and secondary root causes after that. So your task will be to prepare a cause and effect diagram to establish all of the possible root causes of this problem. So in summary, um, Cause and effect diagrams do a lot of things for us. We place the problem statement in the head of the diagram, so that is the effect. We then decide on the names and numbers of main categories. Um, I'm, I'm advising between four and six main categories. And for each of these categories, identify the possible root causes of the main problem. So you could have uh, primary and secondary root causes. Keep the diagram as simple as possible and use separate diagrams for separate problems. So that's our lesson on cause and effect diagrams. I hope you found this video useful.